All right, so we're getting to the good part here. With the foundation laid, with the cleat wall built and hung, now we get to build little hangers to be able to bring order to the chaos of this collection of tools. So as I look at my particular collection of things that need to have some organization brought to them, I don't see that there's gonna be any major feats of engineering involved to create a little hanger that I throw a cleat on the back of to be able to hang up on the wall. Now the collection of things that you're organizing, uh, if you need some inspiration, go look up that Facebook group that I mentioned. It's like a uh, French cleat wall storage ideas, something really close to that name. Facebook group, uh, join it, and if nothing else, just go browse through the photos and you can see uh, some of the stuff that people have built. I think it mostly happens to be like woodshop oriented stuff, um, but anyway, it's all, it's all very adaptable, very cross applicable to whatever crafty thing you're into. Uh, so when I look at what's here, I think I would get a lot of mileage out of starting by building a hanger that will hold a square. Uh, Cause you can, as you can see, I've got several of them uh so if i if i build one i get to build several more like it and i will have uh hung several of my tools so i'm not gonna put you guys through watching me build every single little hanger for every single thing but we'll go ahead and build one of them and that'll give you the idea you can again use your imagination from there so I got a bit of a head start in uh, building some of these tool holders for the stuff that I'm trying to get organized and I'm really getting into it. It's, it's, it's a lot of fun actually. It's very crafty. Uh, so don't worry, I saved some for you. We're still going to go ahead and build one together. Now in just a moment we'll go ahead and zoom in and sort of look, get a closer look at some of these and talk through some of the mm, design considerations uh, for lack of a better term. But before we do that, I broke a couple of rules. There's a few things that I've got up here that uh, are outside the box of the French cleat based hanging system. The first one that was easiest to hang is my big framing square up here. It's just resting on the top of our, our backer board here. Uh, so it didn't need to take up any real estate actually down on the board itself. Uh, so it's just resting up there. Um, it's a little bit sketchy the way it's up there because there isn't any sort of a, like a rim on the top of that board to sort of retain this and keep it up there. So that's something I will probably add as soon as I think of what it is that I could use that's skinny that I could tack in place or glue in place just on the top edge of our, of our backboard here. Uh, so that's the first thing that I sort of uh, went outside, colored outside the lines on. There's this big old protractor thing here that I actually use over at the table saw with my tapering jig on rare occasions. I don't desperately need to get close to the table saw terribly often. So it's marking and measuring tool related. So I went ahead and just hung it up here on a couple of screws. It's huge. There's no need for it to take up real estate on our French cleat board. So it's kind of off to the side. And then there's one more that I sort of, yeah, colored outside the lines with over here. Um, again, it's off the French cleat wall. This is just a PVC tube based thing that I just epoxied together. This is protractor type stuff. There's an itty bitty one. There's a very large protractor and then a, uh, like a scribing tool, which is very, uh, very similar in nature. So, um, that's just, uh, glued to its own little backer board and just screwed to the wall right next to this. So again, it's something that really didn't lend itself really well to like what you see in some of these others, a, a flat backboard and something to uh, hang it from or holster it with. I could have done that with those, but I don't know, that's, this just felt like the right thing to me. Now I haven't painted any of these yet. I eventually will, but I wanted to have you get a glimpse of them before I did that. They'll probably get a similar treatment to what I did with the backer board. So with all of those exceptions out of the way, let's go ahead and zoom in and take a closer look at just a couple of these, and then we'll go ahead and build one together. So let's start with this one, pretty straightforward. It's just got a little bit of a backer board. There's a little bit of a shelf for the square to rest on, and then, th then just a little bit of a facing piece here up front, just as a retainer to keep it from just like leaping off the wall and tumbling to the floor. So just, just something to help secure it up there. Then I added another slice of this over to the side in case it got bumped in this direction, just something to, uh, to retain it and help to keep it from falling off in that direction. Now, 
after I built that guy, I noticed that there was some kind of empty real estate here. And so I just tapped a little picture nail in there to go ahead and hang these oddball tools from. Now, I could have built a dedicated backer with a cleat on it just for these guys, but this is otherwise kind of wasted space. Now, the main intent for this backer board is for all of my marking and measuring tools, but even though I haven't built holders for all of them yet, I'm gonna have more than enough space. Uh, so lots of room to grow or lots of room for some other category of stuff that I choose to throw uh, on the wall here. But I'm still, even with that, even though I've got plenty of space, I'm trying to sort of think in advance in terms of uh, space conservation and sort of doubling up and making the most of the real estate that I've got. So I, I've been um, looking for opportunities like this and trying to take advantage of them as they bear. Uh, so let's go ahead and look at this one next. Again, trying to double up on things, just a couple of um, combination squares here. Um, so same sort of a thing. There's a, a shelf for the thing to rest on. In this case, it's just a triangular piece of wood that's behind our little half circle thing here uh, so that it matches this profile. So it just rests on there and, and uh, help to hold it straight up and down. And again, I just chose a little half circle sort of a thing as a, as a retainer. Again, if this gets bumped, just to keep it from leaping off the wall and tumbling to the floor. So got a pair of those going on. I do want to point out one other little nuance in uh, how the two of these differ in terms of their design. All in all, it's the same concept. Uh, there's a little backer board and a little, and a little cleat behind it. So to, sh to um, expound on this. I'm going to go ahead and take the stuff off of it that's here. So we'll look at the back of this guy. It's just the uh, just the cleat on the back and then a little uh, just a backer board and you do whatever you have to do on the front of it to accommodate whatever you're trying to organize. Now this one is set up so that the cleat is at the very top which is fine and dandy. It, it, it sits there and it's long enough that it spans this second cleat so the bottom of it kind of has something to rest on. So I think that's, and that was an important to me. This is the very first one that I built. But the fact that this is small and lightweight, I've been a little bit concerned that if it gets bumped, uh, it could, um, it, 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 I'm being pretty violent here, so maybe it's not really an issue. But I'm still a was a little bit concerned that these could, could pop off the wall and um, again, go crashing to the floor. I don't know why I'm so paranoid about that. Um, but there was, and I've got a tip that I picked up that I'm trying to remember whose channel it was on. I want to give credit where credit is due. Let me go look it up and I'll try to put something in the description box. But there was a, another French cleat video out there. A guy had a brilliant idea to uh, work around the potential for that problem. And I went ahead and implemented it on this guy. So with this one, instead of the cleat being at the very top, actually I did put a cleat at the very top, but there's another one down here. And this one, if I push up on it, it, it stops. How did we do that? Well, above this cleat, there's an extra little piece of that same wood that just takes up that extra space. Now that I've removed this little spacer, this can now come off the wall. But when that guy is in there taking up that space, it sort of locks it in place and keeps the whole thing from raising any further up than this spacer will allow. So we'll hang him back up there and then we'll put that little spacer in place. So it's got a lot less chance of, of going anywhere. Matter of fact, that spacer could stand to be just a little bit wider to uh, take up the slack there to make it just that much more secure. But I thought that was a great tip. Let me find whose video that is and I will link to it because he deserves the credit. Um, Oh, can't say the name of his channel. 
So just one more thing before we dive in and go ahead and start building these together. I wanted to show you one other thing that's, uh, well, mostly courtesy of the dollar store. It's just this little plastic basket. You get a, you get a stack of three of these for, you know, $1.25 or whatever. It's not the dollar store anymore, folks, right? Uh, so just a little, again, a little piece of that cleat material that I ripped down on the table saw, cut it to width. And then on the inside, there's just a craft stick that I also cut it to length so that when I drove some staples in there, it would sort of certify the whole thing. This uh, is a really simple and pretty cheap way to, depending on what sorts of pieces and parts and things that you're trying to bring some organization to on a wall-based system, you know, think outside the box. You don't have to build everything from scratch. Uh, if you just have the cleat material, you could find some pre-made things like this that will sort of help you cut to the chase. Now, you recall that I mentioned early in the video that these uh, French cleat-based wall storage systems are really popular in woodworking circles, and with good reason, we have a lot of tools, and of course, uh, banging out something like this is relatively easy because we are already tooled up for it. Don't let that steer you away and think, oh, I'm not equipped for that. Pretty much everything I've done here, if you've got access to a table saw, even a neighbor's table saw, that's pretty much all you need. Uh, now to rip down the big board to size, having a circular saw and a straight edge, and that could, could just be a long board and a couple of clamps to hold that board still that you run the saw up against the, uh, the edge of that board. That's pretty much all you need. Now, because I'm tooled up for it, I've gone to a level of detail with the look of some of mine uh, because I can, because I have the tools for it. So um, you can see that like this guy, it's just squared off on the bottom. But then I started going, oh, let's go ahead and prettify these and round off the corners just to soften the edges and give them a little bit more of a uh, refined and finished look. You don't have to do that. Uh, they're no more or less functional if they're just cut off straight with squared off corners and they're quick and they're fast and super, super useful. So with that, I think that's everything I had in mind to talk about in terms of like design considerations. If you're a French cleat storage wall addict and you've got something else that you've done, something else to contribute to the conversation, please, please, please add a comment, share that with the community, share your expertise and your knowledge and your little tips and tricks and cool nifty things that you've done. All right, so we're back at the assembly table. This is kind of the fun part. Let's get our crafty on, everybody. Uh, so I've got a chunk of this material that we have been working with uh, that will be the basis of the backer board for the next hanger that we're going to make. Um, now, it's, it's intentionally oversized. I'm sure this is bigger than what we will, we will actually need. It's larger, I think, than anything else that I've already made. So I'm, I'm confident that this will be a good starting place. Uh, so these are the tools over here that I have yet to build a hanger for. Um, let's see, let's, let's go ahead and together we'll make a hanger for this square. Uh, so let's kind of figure out the layout of this and uh, what sort of dimensions that this will fit into. And then we'll head to the table saw and then we'll cut this guy down to size once we determine our needs. Like that. All right, so that's all the bigger that our backer board needs to be. This is scrap and this is scrap. Let's head over to the table saw and get this guy cut out. All right, how'd we do? Yep, perfect fit. All right.
right, so here we have our little kit. Pretty simple, right? That's all the parts. Uh, so before we actually start assembling, I do like to um, just kind of knock the hard edges off of some of the some of the pieces. So I'm just gonna just hit it with some sandpaper and just soften things a little bit. Actually, I actually like this sanding block a lot. Um, this is, I've talked about this in a previous video, but I just, it comes out all the time. It uses belt sander belts and um, it's a really tough sandpaper. You know, the other types of sanding blocks where you use like uh, a sheet of regular sandpaper and you cut a portion of it down and it clips into it somehow, the, uh, the paper ends up like tearing well before the grit is worn off. Um, but and while sanding belt belts are a little more expensive, they're really rugged, uh, so they last a long time. And this has all these different profiles depending on what it is that you're what you're sanding. And if you need to get into skinny little places, uh, you can you can do it. So I, I use it a lot, so I, I geek out on it. Pardon me if you've uh, heard about it before, and I'll ask for forgiveness in advance if I uh, make mention of this again in a future video, but I really like this thing. Anyhow, uh, so yeah, just enough to break the sharp edges. All right, so give it up. Do you have a favorite? Let me know in the comments if there's one of these holders in particular that you were particularly drawn to just because, I don't know, you thought it came out cool or because that was the thing that was clicked in your mind that, ah, I could adapt that for whatever it is that you're trying to organize in your creative space. Tell me about your project. I'd love to hear what you're working on and what sorts of things you're trying to organize. Obviously this is marking and measuring tools and I've got, you know, for cosmetic reasons here, I spread everything out, but obviously I've got lots of room to grow. Maybe I'll end up with more marking and measuring tools, though I don't really think I need any, or there'll be some other category of stuff that'll get sprinkled onto this board as well. So I had a lot of fun with this project and now on to the next thing. Hey, thank you so much, everyone. We really appreciate you hanging out with us here on He Said, She Shed. And until next time, take care and take care of each other. And we'll see you again real soon. Bye-bye, everyone.